Hello, greetings. It's Stasia Bliss. I'm completely all natural today. I'm just about to go and have a facial. So I thought I'd just be with myself as is and present myself to you as is. And um, some of this energy of awakening anew is also asking us to become more comfortable with deeper layers of ourself and to face ourselves anew, right? So in an awakening process, what can be very uncomfortable often comes from a resistance to being with ourselves. I know it sounds so simple, but it actually is very challenging sometimes to be with ourselves just raw and naked, just with ourselves. There's so many judgments placed upon us by society, the culture, families, our childhood conditioning, schools, the medical industry, all of these layers that actually do act like cocooning sort of layers and not always in a good way. Sometimes it's, it's very much like a prison of beliefs and so in an awakening, there is a disruption or a cracking of these layers. And it can be a tendency for us to want to hold on to those things as they fly away. Because actually, as humans, we, we fear our greatness the most. We actually are more comfortable with being in pain and more comfortable with suffering and more comfortable with the discomfortable like life situations of anxiety and depression than we like to or care to admit. Uh, we want to get over them, but when the opportunity comes for it, and this happens always in healing sessions, I see this quite often, um, maybe not always, a lot of people are really excited to jump into themselves, but it's very common to come to a place in healing where you have the opportunity presented now to step into a new life and that's so scary that it's easier to retreat to oh the symptoms are coming back oh i'm back to the old oh i can't get out of it because going forward would mean needing to access new creativity needing to be more vulnerable with life again putting yourself in the position where yes you could get hurt because now you're coming into a new place and that's very reminiscent of the innocent self long ago before any of the wounds happened and though we want to go there we want to start anew there is this conditioning that says you're going to get hurt. It's going to hurt again. If you get better, it's going to come back. You know, like you're never going to get out of this. You're always going to be in suffering. Um, the awakening process is like learning to get comfortable with being uncomfortable, not in the depressed, anxious, you know, societally sanctioned ways of being down, but the discomfort of stepping into the new of stepping into a new raw place of trying something new i went i mentioned yesterday in my video i went to this turkish coffee place downtown salt lake and oh my goodness it was exquisite if you're ever in salt lake i think it's called keva or something like that it's down downtown uh, where the dragonfly cafe used to be or the sign's still there anyway um i can't remember how you say it, it starts with a k but it is divine and they have like the beautiful little teacups from Turkey and they make the, you know, coffee in the sand and the decor was lovely. And in many ways, it was this outward expression of this inner appreciation of beauty. And there were crystal healers upstairs and tarot card readers. And boy, it resonated with me on like a really like profound level. And mm, I drank this delicious cardamom um, rose moon milk and this almond milk base thing and this beautiful glass. I have to post a picture on my Instagram. It's just like delightful. But what it did to me going and doing that because, you know, it was, I had all these things planned yesterday and I'm very busy these days with all these new things coming online and with clients and kids and running around and teaching some yoga classes and uh, family is in town and I was like oh, I really want to go to this place it's really calling me but I really can't find a place for my schedule except for at 8 a.m. right after I take my son to school um, it's way downtown so I'm gonna just literally get there right when they open 
but you know what? I'm going to do it. So I call the friend who lives down there, meet me at eight o'clock. And they're like, why are you downtown at eight o'clock? But I'm like, this is the time that I can go. And it was like out of my comfort zone, really. Like I could have just come home and like got in the bath like I do or, you know, do my video early. But instead I just, I felt the prompting, the intuition. I just went, I was so happy, so happy. Like it ignited something in me, like my life force became rejuvenated from the beauty of this place and some like latent dreams and ideas that were percolating under the surface in, you know, dormant centers were activated by seeing this dream of this person come alive and something correlated. And I met this shaman upstairs who had these viking drums with runes on them and oh this is stuff that i work with too and it was it was beating at my heart and awakening something in me that was even more you know prevalent and forthcoming and so it's helped it helped me to birth some new parts of me or starting to birth some new parts of me and i have some ideas like percolating and some things like under the surface and one thing that i have been studying and working on lately is Viking astrology, the runic astrology. Um, so if you haven't had that done with me, you probably haven't because I've only done just a handful of, of those runic astrology reads. It is absolutely exquisite, especially if you have Scandinavian um, ancestry or you're just drawn to that. Um, there's something really beautiful about how the simplicity of they just really were paying attention to the sun and the moon and the earth and like so that astrology is really based on your sun and your moon and your rising sign and then this luck of the norns which is a very um, matriarchal time feminine energy really held in that scandinavian and viking tradition the homes and the um, businesses and the cattle and so forth and the men just had their tools and they were warriors and they would come and they would be like fed by the women and nourished by the women and the women provided and the norns were the wise women who you know like wove the fates you know were the weavers and they anyway like you get also a luck rune and um what I love about the runes is they are also speaking to the Kundalini. This is the Kundalini expressing because this is the life force energy. It's called the owned in the Viking tradition, the life force, the chi, and how it manifests and how you work with this. And runes is a way of working with this life force energy. And it's a magic, it's a like magical um, practice. So something it was ignited in me yesterday that's just really coming online more and more but follow those little inspirations follow those things that pop up this is your life force speaking to you this is your your dharma your destiny your path unfolding before you and the places we feel discomfort notice well, often it's in like doing the good things that we like shy away from and we go and we cling to Sometimes the easier way that's really hard of the suffering when, you know, part of that is just being able to hold that, yes, some suffering exists. That's the alchemy, right? Sometimes we hold the suffering, but we hold it with this, you know, we wake in the inner child again, the creativity, the magic, the divine feminine, the Shakti. Like, can we hold the two together? Can we hold our human vessel, which really is the suffering part, right? With our divine, which is the magical part, can we let our bodies be instruments of the divine? Can we let our pain direct us to the right path? Can we listen to it and, you know, be moved in the direction of it? Um, I love it when, when some of you are watching my videos and sending me emails and telling me what's going on and, and I'm so honored to be able to utilize some of the methods that I've acquired over the years to help you also like tune into the magic of your life. That is my absolute joy. That is my house of bliss <laughs> to be uh, with you in that discovery because magic is our birthright. The Kundalini is the magic. The Ma is the magic. The Shakti is the magic. The life force like that we are meant to work with, that we are meant to embody, that we are here to express. And, um, so I appreciate you being here again with me and 
I'm off to get a facial and um, we will see you again very soon. So much love to you. Namaste.